I'm a Lego inventor, and today I'm gonna build working Lego Wolverine claws that can actually extend and retract at will with just the push of a button. Dude, that is so cool. Spoilers, they might be super awesome. On the off chance that they're not though, spoilers, they might suck. I'm just kidding, I can't put that in. So here's the plan. Step one, we need to build the blades. So we need to basically find a piece that would work for that. We could use wedge plates, which do look sharp, but they're pretty wide. Axles won't work either because they're too bendy. So I'm thinking one of these slope pieces will work because they have the right shape. We just need to find them in gray. Okay, so after a little sorting, I finally found the pieces. These are these nice little slopes here. And what I'm thinking is if we just attach a couple plates, we can actually make these longer. And by putting tiles on top, make them actually look like Wolverine's claws. Just have a couple of these. We want to overlap these as much as we can to get as much usable area. So I'm going to use a one by four. And that should give us some nice room to work with there. Nice, check it out. What kid hasn't grabbed like three sticks and done this? I have. So now that we have the claws, we just need to figure out how to make them go from this to this. And then I wanna make them each go individually, so we'll just build the same mechanism essentially three times, so that one can go up, and then the next one, and the next one, or just whatever one you want, except for one combination we won't talk about. So the next step is to build a mechanism to actually make these move. And I have a pretty good idea for how this is gonna work. So we're gonna first put three switches on the battery box in you know, whatever order. And we'll figure out a way to mount this to our arm later. And then on each of these switches, we're gonna put each motor. Just need to see what I'm working with. Okay, so now if we switch the battery box on, each of these switches controls its own motor. So in this case, what we wanna do is we wanna basically take this and add some gear racks on top so that when we put the motor here, it will spin and retract and extend. But we need to make this super compact because remember we got three of these and we don't want it to be super ugly. So let's start with one of them and then we can just copy it to the other ones. So these are our gear racks and then I kind of left a little bit of plate room on here because the thing is, oh, that's right, isn't it? This is gonna have to go up quite a ways, but that's okay. No one ever looks at the back of the claws anyway. So what we're gonna do is just kind of sneak these onto here. Now we gotta attach a gear to this. Basically the gear spins on the gear rack, pulls it back, and then to extend, we just flip the switch the other way, which is great. So we need to find a way to connect this so it's really compact. I'm thinking if we build something that changes the direction from here to here, just go like that. Look at that, we've switched it. So now this can go right on the edge of the blade. That's a lot more compact. So now we just gotta attach these together and then we can duplicate it two more times and have three working things. Okay, so I have this prototype built up. We basically have this red axle that goes through. So as you can see, it goes out and comes back in. The issue I'm running into, trying to stop this motor. <laughs> like, it sounds dumb, but like, it needs to stop on its own, but it doesn't really do that. Wait, I'm smart. I just thought this through and I was like, hey, wait a minute. Put a corner plate right there. And then we put a piece here. And this should stop it. So we stop it on this end with like the table thing. And on this end, it stops like that. That was a lot simpler than I thought, but that is gonna try and rip itself apart. So we need to really lock this together. Use a couple of these maybe. Right there, you add this, that locks that together. And now this is so compact that all stabbing, oh, oh wait, <laughs> except for when that comes off. But that's great because that keeps it really, really tight. So the next step is to build two more of these so we can attach them to our wrists. So I just got the other two built and I wanna test these out. So basically, this is how wide they're all gonna be. <laughs> Man, if I could just move this motor to the top and figure out how to get it to spin this. Because right now, this is how wide it's gonna be. Which, you know, isn't horrible for the amount of stuff we have to put into this, but it's not great either. All right, allow me to demonstrate the issue with this design. So it's pretty bad. <laughs> Plug this into here. It's thinner, obviously, than this design. This is pretty bulky, but it has this problem. It has to stop and yeah, it's not even gonna work. I'm trying to fit these gears in a way where we can gear from this to this so that this sits on top, the motor, but then it doesn't screw everything up. And I'm having an issue with it. So I think I just need to keep like engineering this and locking this together like I did here. Like everything's just so compact, it's very difficult. Did it. Yo, okay, so check that out. So what I ended up doing was taking these gears and putting them on the outside of this, which locks it together, but it actually works. So now we just gotta mimic that design on these two, and then we'll strap it onto our arm. All right, so next up, we're gonna actually measure the power of one of these blades using the scale here. Super accurate measuring tool. So if we just put this thing right under here, attach the battery box, get our eye protection, in case anything goes wrong, and boom, what do we got? 
15, 4, 4, 13, 12. Seems to be dropping from 15. Actually, not bad at all. So I'm gonna say about 10 to 15 pounds of torque, or force, or whatever. Not bad for one of these Lego claws. So the next step then is to attach them together so we can mount them to something on our arm. Look at that, guys. And each one of them retracts. That's fantastic. We just need to connect these in series like this. And then the triggers will go on the inside of my palm so I can activate them with my fingers. But for now, what we gotta do is just lock all these together. And my thought for that is to grab mixel joints and attach them to the bottom of this area. We need room for these gears to spin here. So let's not make it like super wide. Let's just do it a little bit. Let's try this. And then connect one more to this side. Look at that. <laughs> That's basically what we want, except we just want to make sure that the gears aren't touching those pieces. So if we add a few plates back here, it's like way more comfortable. And then we just gotta build a handle that comes around. And I wanna build that out of something comfortable. Lego makes this cool strap. Yes, look at that. These are Lego dot straps, and these are perfect because they're flexible. So we can hopefully use these to attach to my hand and be more comfortable. However, there's not a lot of attachment points other than studs and these few holes, so. I think we can attach it across here to be something we can grip onto. And then to make this smooth so it's actually more comfortable, we can just use these pieces. They're like round on the bottom, so we can put these on top of the plates and then that actually makes it a lot more comfortable. You know what we might be able to do? Which is super illegal, but what if we stretch this around this? Hey, look at that. And then on the other side, we can just attach, we can just take this off, use the same ball joints we attached before. We want it like that. Snaps right on there. Check this out. Oh. Apart from that, it works. We need a stronger connection in between the joints because the ball joints work, but not well enough. They keep snapping off. Okay, so after some redesigning, majorly, I redid the connection pieces without using mixel joints in the middle. So they're using these Technic pieces, which makes it a lot stronger. And then I also replaced the large mixel joints on the side with these tinier ones so that we can stick this thing on just like that. And now it's not as illegal because it's not stressing the pieces. And look at how much more comfortable that is. It's just like not bulky. So now we just gotta really build this up so we can go around our arm. Okay, so I got two straps on and basically this is something that just you hold. But what I'm doing now is just trying to figure out the pinky thing. Sounds great. Now I can access it with my pinky. Nice. So if you switch the battery box, they'll all go at once, or you could take off the switches here. Switch it this way. And so now my thought is we just do one more connection that's connected with this at a pivot, and that will attach right here to kind of give it more volume. We're just gonna use hinges. <laughs> Snap together some of these. We're kind of just gonna create a cuff for the back of it. So we'll attach these then with the round thing in a line. And then I'm gonna grab a four by six like this, and we can attach that to this. Look at that, we're getting somewhere already. Put it on, and then this thing goes right here. So now to attach these together, we can use probably a one of these. Shove it not to move around too much. Nice, and then we just gotta attach some plates and tiles to this and bring it around towards the front so we can close, and some final touches to make it look better. So in keeping with the Wolverine color scheme, I'm adding in some yellow and blue. So I'm adding the, some yellow tiles here. Kind of just complete the look, you know, complete the vibe. Because it's all about the fine details, the things that'll make it pop in the thumbnail. Looks kind of spiky. And I'm also gonna add some dark blue. Actually, bright blue might be better in this case, but we're gonna put that probably on the sides here. So that's my plan, just adding some cool details and make it look better. Make it look all Wolverine-y. All right guys, here it is, the final creation, the working mechanical Wolverine Claws. So I'm gonna show you how to put it on. You basically slide your hand through, and this is actually pretty comfortable with this little hand strap. You're gonna put your thumb through there. This thing, all the cables, snap into here using the brackets. And then this strap comes across, just like that, goes on the second notch for me. And then on the bottom, this thing snaps in right there. And that's pretty loose, so it like has enough room to move around. And then this cable, this one cable, goes to the battery box, which you hold in your hand, or in your other hand, and you can turn it on and off. So here we go. In three, two, one. Dude, that is so cool. Working Wolverine Claws. Go back the other way. <laughs> this is the battery box I hold in my hand, but I can also hook this up to the switches so you can do individual fingers. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool. Doing them separately is actually a little more fun because you can switch the battery box around. 
and just control them separately. And once you switch it around, the buttons aren't fantastic, but they do work. So this turned out pretty cool. It didn't fare super well in the watermelon. Ouch. Or the canvas test. They're not super sharp, bub. Which is a little disappointing. Does it actually work? Yes, it actually retracts and extends, which is exactly what we set out to build. Sometimes when you fail the watermelon and the canvas test, you have to think to yourself, how can I spin this so that it's actually cool? So huge thanks for watching, guys. You can check out one of these two videos popping up on your screen. Also, don't forget to check out the sponsor of this video, Crazy Guy's Brickling Store, for your Lego brick needs. You can check them out by clicking the link down in the description or this button right here. <laughs> See ya.